Nim. Hello, Venerable Sunim. Thank you so much for taking my question today. Thank you. Um, I come from the Vajrayana tradition of Buddhism and have been practicing for about seven years, so not very long. Um, and I'm very lucky to have met a Tibetan Lama uh, in 2018 who has given me uh, an empowerments and shared teachings with me uh, to practice visualization and mantra. And the practices are beautiful um, and they are very complex like us. Human beings are very complex too. Um, and another side of me is that I am a mum. I have two very small children, husband, a household to run and work commitments out of the household. And I find those things, all those worldly things, very uh, time-consuming uh, and it leaves me little time to do uh, spiritual practice uh, formally on my meditation cushion and, and it upsets me uh, and I feel quite anxious that I don't get consistent time to do that but the anxiety is now habitual uh, and it affects my sleep uh, and this concerns me uh, but uh, I, I feel that death is coming, it is there in the background, um, but I'm not getting enough time to practice and, yeah, it worries me. So I, I ask for your advice. Thank you. What you just said has nothing to do with spiritual practice. You feel hurried and anxious. Yes. This has nothing to do whether you get to practice or not. What you're doing is you're taking your lack of practice ability to practice and causing causing that or fixing that as an object of your problem. If you are able to practice as much as you like, then you will find something else as the target of your problem. So let's go back to the foundation of Buddha's teaching and look at this problem from that perspective. 우리는 살아가면서 많은 음, 괴로움을 겪고 있습니다. We go through different and various suffering as we live our lives. 자, 어떤 일을 하나 하겠다고 우리가 목표를 정했다고 합시다. Say we decide on a goal to achieve something. 음, 그 일이 이, 목표가 이루어지기 전까지 우리는 불안합니다. Until we achieve that goal, we become anxious. And why are we anxious? 이루어질지 이루어지지 않을지 불분명하기 때문입니다. We're anxious because of the uncertainty of whether we'll achieve that goal or not. 음, 또 초조합니다. And we're nervous and anxious. 또 근심도 됩니다. And we worry. 예, 걱정도 됩니다. And we're concerned. 음, 종합적으로 말하면 두려움이 있다는 겁니다. So comprehensively, we can refer to that state of mind as we're fearful. 근데 결과가 그 일을 이루어지지 않았습니다. But say that we did not achieve that goal. 뭐 화가 납니다. Then we get angry. 어 이것이 이루어지지 않았던 어떤 사람이나 어떤 문제에 대해서 우리는 어, 불만을 표합니다. Then we start to looking for people or things to blame. We start looking for excuses. And we fix that target of that excuse, our blame, and we start hating it. 또 원망합니다. And we feel as if we were wronged. 음, 그러고 한참 시간이 지납니다. And time passes like this. 음, 또 별거 아닙니다. And then you realize it's not a big deal. 그러면 그때 내가 원망했고 화냈고 하는 거를 돌아보면서 또 후회합니다. And the anger that we felt back then, we look back on it and we feel regret. 이런 것을 우리가 종합적으로 
합해서 괴로움이다 이렇게 표현합니다. So all this process and the emotions throughout this cycle, this process, we can call it as uh, as suffering. 우리가 어떤 좋은 사람을 만나서 관계를 맺고 있으면서도 우리는 똑같습니다. So you could be in a great relationship with a wonderful person. However, 네. you know the underlying dynamics is the same. 이것이 중간에 혹시 중, 지금은 좋지만 혹시 중단될까 염려가 됩니다. Because if you are with a great person in a great relationship, on one corner of your mind, you're always concerned that this might end. 늘 심리적으로 불안이 잠재해 있습니다. So the anxiety is always with you. 헤어지게 되면 섭섭하고 슬픕니다. What if we break up and then if you do, you feel sad. 또 관계를 어떻게 회복할까에 대해서 어, 괴로움이 생깁니다. Then you also suffer because you are constantly thinking of how do I recover this relationship? How do I put it back the way it was? 이것이 우리들의 에, 일반적인 삶입니다. This is how we actually normally live our lives. 에, 이것을 통틀어서 괴로움이다 이렇게 표현합니다. So taking all this account in a totality, we call it suffering. 이것은 현재 우리들의 괴로움만 괴로움이 아니라 즐거움이라는 것도 그 빛바닥에는 이런 불안, 초조, 또그 즐거움이 사라졌을 때 오는 아쉬움, 슬픔 이런 것을 안고 있기 때문에 이것 또한 괴로움이라는 거예요. So it's not the acute pain that we suffer right now that suffering. Suffering is also encompasses the joy you feel because with joy comes the fear of losing that joy. So that's also suffering. 그럼 이런 괴로움이 왜 생길까 하는 겁니다. So the question is, why do the suffering exist? 원인이 뭘까? What's the cause of the suffering? 이것을 집착이다 이렇게 말합니다. And we call that desire or attachment. 우리가 어떤 일을 하겠다고 목표를 세워도 그게 집착하면 이런 두려움이 생깁니다. Because say we set a goal to achieve something, going back to the original example, then we are attached and obsessed over that goal, and that causes suffering. 또 그것이 안 되면 또 괴로움이 생깁니다. And if we fail to achieve it, that causes suffering. 그래서 우리가 만약에 집착하지 않는다면 어떨까? So what if we don't attach ourselves or obsess over something? 우리는 그런 목표를 정해도 불안하지도 않고 그것이 이루어지지 않아도 괴롭지가 않습니다. Then we can set a goal, but if you don't allow yourself to be obsessed to obsess over it, it doesn't lead to suffering. 안 되면 다시 하면 되기 때문입니다. Because if it fails the first time, then you can always try the next time. 어, 그래도 안 되면 포기하면 됩니다. And if it doesn't try to work the next time, then you can give up. 이것이 에, 불안이나 두려움이나 괴로움의 원인이 되지 않는다는 겁니다. What it is, you're not creating the seed of, uh, of root cause for your suffering. 그래서 부탁께서는 이 집착을 버리면 괴로움이 없어진다고 가르쳤습니다. That's why Buddha taught that if you let go of your attachment, the suffering shall disappear as well. 그럼 어떻게 하면 집착을 버릴 수 있을까 하는 겁니다. Then comes how? How do I? Let go of my attachment. 그 지금이 항상 깨어 있어야 한다. Then he said, "You gotta be always awake and aware to the here and now." 어제 다니고 내일 다니고 지금에. Not yesterday, not tomorrow, but now. 음. 다른 곳이 아니라 여기에. Nowhere else but here. 음. 다른 사람이 아니라 자신에게. No one else but yourself. 그래서 지금 여기 나의 마음에 깨어 있어야 한다는 거예요. That's why you gotta be awake and mindful to here and now and mind, mind me. 음, 그런 방법으로 여덟 가지를 제시하셨습니다. And he suggests eight paths to get there. 우리가 그를 여덟 가지 바람길 팔 정도라고 부릅니다. And we call that the eightfold path. 그러면 지금 질문자의 문제는 무엇일까? Then going back to your question, what is your problem? 수행에 집착하고 있다. Then your problem is that you are obsessing over or attaching yourself 
to this thing called spiritual practice. 명상에 집착하고 있다. You have you are obsessing over meditation. 염불에 집착하고 있다. You are obsessing over chanting. 음, 그것을 버려야 하는데 그것을 버려야 하는데 그것을 찾고 있는 거예요. So spiritual practice and its foundation is about letting go of those obsessions or attachments, but you're instead creating a target called spiritual practice and attaching yourself to it. 음, 그래서 명상을 할수 없음에 염불을 할수 없음에 지금 불안하고 화가 나고 이렇게 괴로움이 생기는. That's why you're getting nervous and anxious and angry over your lack of ability or time or whereabouts in order to practice your spiritual practice called meditation, chanting, what not. 질문자가 말하는 수행이니 명상이니 염불이니 하는 것은 괴로움을 만드는 지금 원인이 되고 있습니다. So basically, the spiritual practice that you call, for example, meditation, uh, chanting, recitation, what not. It's actually the cause of your suffering. 마치 방석에 앉아야 된다. 이거는 돈을 벌어야 된다. 승진해야 된다. 이거 똑같이 그냥 집착일 뿐입니다. So the fact that you need to sit down at a cushion and meditate in a formal way, the same attachment that you put there is the same attachment that others have towards having to earn more money or having to advance in their careers. 음, 그렇기 때문에 에... 이것은 명상이 아닙니다. So then you're not engaged in meditation. 형식에 지금 집착되어 있습니다. You're attached, obsessing over the formality of meditation. 음. You have understood me well. Thank, thank you, Venerable Sunim. Thank you. How, how do you let go of that attachment? May I ask? 그러니까 앉을 수 있는 시간 앉아야 된다 이렇게 하지 말고 시간이 나면 앉아서 정진을 하고. So don't tell yourself that you need to sit at this time in the uh, space, you know, in a cushion somewhere. Say whenever time and opportunity to force yourself, then you can spiritually practice. 또 일을 하면 일을 하면서 연부를 하고. Or you can actually chant or recite uh, whatever practice you want to engage in as you work. Um, and if you could do prostration whenever opportunity to force itself, that's what you do. When we engage in vipassana meditation, you know, we become mindful of the breath when we sit down. 또 몸에서 일어나는 감각을 알아차리고 or we become aware mindful of the sensation throughout our body. 음, 그럴 때는 동작을 알아차리고 or we become aware or mindful of our movements. 만질 때는 만지는 동작을 알아차리고 and if we are touching something then we become mindful of what we touch. 어, 상대하고 대화할 때는 마음의 반응을 알아차리고 and if you are engaged in a conversation with somebody else, then you become intensely mindful of your own reactions. 그 주어지는 조건대로 알아차림을 유지하는 것이 바사나입니다. So vipassana is being mindful whatever situation you find yourself in. 그러니까 우리가 이 젠부디전 어, 부디즘 같은 것을 예를 든다면 For example, taking an example from Zen Buddhism. 음, 앉아서도 화두를 참고하고 if we think on the coin when we sit down. 음, 대화할 때도 참고하고. Or we do the same while we are conversing with somebody else. 예, 언제만 수행하고 언제는 안 한다가 아니라 그 조건에 맞게끔 집중한다는 거예요. So spiritual practice is not something discrete that you reserve for a specific time and space. It's something you constantly do in the background no matter what activities you're engaged in. 어, 티벳 저기 라마승들 수행하는 거 보셨지 않습니까? I'm sure you have observed uh, lamas, you know, practicing. 절할 때는 절하고. You know, they prostrate when they do. 앉을 수 있으면 앉아서 하고. And they practice when they're sitting down. 
탑을 돌면서 또 연불하지 않습니까? Or they recite and can't, we can't uh, as they go around uh, for alms. 그러니까 조건에 맞게끔 하면 됩니다. Basically, everything situational. It's all about you practicing depending on the situation. 근데 이제 초심자는 앉아서 하는 것이 유리합니다. Having said that, it is easier for a beginner to engage in spiritual practice while sitting down. 왜냐하면 움직이면 이게 집주의 집중이 잘안 되니까요. Because if you move around, it takes away from your focus. 그래서 하루의 생활 중에 가난하면 틈을 내서 앉는 시간을 많이 확보해 가는 게 좋습니다. So it's good for you to, you know, try to maximize your time where you can sit down and engage in practice. 근데 잠은 잠대로 자고. But you should still sleep. 먹을 거 먹을 때대로 먹고. Or sleep, and you want to eat as much as you usually do. 놀건다 놀고 TV and TV 대로 보고. And watch TV and enjoy recreation as you usually do. 그러고 앉을 시간이 없다. And then you say that I don't have time to practice by sitting down. 음, 그런 것은 맞지가 않습니다. No, that is not really optimizing your time. 음. 저녁에는 가족들이 아이들이 있어서. 따로 시간을 내기 어렵다면 첫째 아이들하고 한번 언언을 해보는 거예요. 엄마가 이렇게 하고 싶은데 누가 협조 좀 해줄래? 이렇게 언언을 해보고. And if you have to take care of your kids in the evening, so it's difficult to get your own time, maybe talk to your children and say, you know what, I want to do this just for myself for a while, and can you help me out? 또 아이들은 남편들에게 어, 여보 나 이렇게 하고 싶은데 청소 좀 도와줄래? 이렇게 해서 역할 분담을 하고. Or I mean, I ask your husband. You know what? I need a little time for myself. I like to use this time for spiritual practice. Can you help me out with household chores? Oh, 그게 좀 어렵다면 아침에 조금 잠을 줄이고 일찍 일어나고. Or if that's difficult, maybe you sleep like 30 minutes less in the morning. Wake up a little earlier and practice. 아한 시간 더 자는 것보다 한 시간 연불하거나 한 시간 명상하는 게 오히려 몸의 피로를 푸는데도 사실은 더 낫습니다. One hour's worth of meditation or chanting or incantation might be actually better for your health rather than one more hour of sleep. 근데 이 명상을 편안하게 해야 잠자는 것보다 더 쉬워지는데 이것도 막 해야지 깨달아야지 이렇게 애를 쓰고 뭐 일하는 것보다 더 지치게 됩니다. However, meditation and spiritual practice is something that should be done without making any effort or exerting yourself. So if you're trying to exert yourself in trying to, you know, engage in spiritual practice and have a sense of performance-based goal, then it becomes a chore, not practice. 우리가 삶을 편안하고 행복하게 살기 위해서 명상을 하는데 명상을 못해서 괴롭다 하면 이거는 전혀 수행과 거리가 멉니다. Because we meditate to live our lives in a peaceful, relaxed way, but if you're anxious because you don't meditate, then you have lost the original purpose of meditation. 그러니까 제가 보기에는 지금 질문자는 약간의 심리적 불안증과 조급증을 가지고 있습니다. So therefore I feel that you know you're suffering from kind of foundational anxiety and sense of hurry. 지금은 명상하는 것도 필요하지만 약간의 병원에 가서 좀 체크를 하고 조금 도움을 얻는 게 제가 볼 때는 필요한 것 같습니다. So meditation, you know, could be an important part of your life as well. But it's always good for you to get medical advice and get regular checkup, see if there's anything that your doctors can help. 네, 심리적 불안이 있을 때는 명상하는 것이 더 나쁜 효과를 냅니다. 크게 도움이 안 됩니다. Because if there's an underlying psychological condition, then meditation can actually make it worse, not really help. 음, 그래서. 약간의 그 응급 응급 치료를 하면서 명상을 하면 도움이 될 것입니다. So it's always, you know, important for you to look into every option and see if you could engage in medical help as well as meditation in parallel and that actually may amplify the effect. 아니면 그 티베트 스님들 하는 절 알죠? 이리 엎드려 사는 절. Or to, you know, are you familiar with the type of prostrations that Tibetan lamas do? Uh, I have uh, a 
Uh, yes, I am. And I also um, see regularly a, a Korean acupuncturist, and she is Buddhist as well. And she has taught me bowing. So I um, engage in bowing 108 times uh, a, a day, and I find that very useful. Uh, and it's something that I really enjoy to, to do. If I have no time for anything else but that, that makes me so happy. Oh, 그러니까, uh, uh, 지금, uh, 심리적인 불안이 있을 때는, uh, 저를 하면서 저는 편안합니다. 그러니까 심리를 그러니까 편안하게 주세요 이렇게 하면 안 됩니다. 저는 편안합니다. 저는 잘 살고 있습니다. 이렇게 마음으로 새기면서 절을 해야 합니다. So if you have an underlying sense of anxiety, so as you do your bowing practice, 108 bows, you should not be praying or saying that you know, let this give me peace. What you should be repeating to yourself is that I'm already at peace. I'm already at peace. I'm already relaxed. 왜냐하면 여러분들이 어, 편안하게 해주세요 이 말은 불안하다는 얘기예요. 어, 저는 불안합니다. So 저는 right. 불안합니다. 이것을 반복하는 얘기라는 거예요. So in, so in this bowing, if you're praying uh, or asking for peace or relaxation, as you do this bowing, you're in itself admitting to yourself deep down that you're not at peace, that you are anxious, that you are nervous. 음, 그렇기 때문에 저는 편안합니다. 저는 잘 살고 있습니다. 감사합니다. 이렇게 기도를 해야 이, 이 무의식 세계로 자꾸 이렇게 암시, 자기 암시라 그래요. 저는 편안합니다. 저는 편안합니다. 아이고 감사합니다. 부처님 덕택으로 편안하게 잘 살고 있습니다. 감사합니다. 이렇게 해야 심리가 안정이 됩니다. So as you do this, instead of engaging in that kind of beseeching prayer, to repeat to yourself as you bow that I'm already doing well. I'm already happy. I'm already peaceful. And thank you for all these blessings upon me. Oh, and that is a way of subconsciously telling yourself that you have already at peace and happy. 네, 제가 조언을 한다면 어, 한의원도 장기적 치료는 한의원이 좋은데 단기적으로는 어, 정신과에 도움을 좀 받으면 저는 좋겠다 이렇게 생각합니다. So if I had one advice that you want to take away from this engagement, you know, going to uh, an acupuncturist for a long-term kind of treatment is actually good. However, I want you to also look into, you know, seeing a medical doctor and seeing a psychologist to ensure that there's nothing that that person can do in order to diagnose and help you out as well. I will. Thank you, Venerable. I will. Thank you for your time. 네. Thank you. 자, 그러면 어, 현장에 질문이 있는 분 한번 얘기하시기 바랍니다. 누구든지 손 들고 어, 질문을 해도 좋고 어, 오늘 얘기를 들으면서 자기 소감을 발표해도 좋습니다. It's now like to open the floor uh, to the audience on Zoom. Uh, if you like to you know, share a comment, uh, a thought, impression, or ask me a question, please go ahead and do so. 질문이 없으면 소감을 발표해 주세요. If you don't have a question, uh, please feel free, share to, uh, feel free to share your comments or impression. 네, 얘기하세요. Yes, I think it was so important for you to point us out that don't take a practice meditation as another goal. This is a real problem, in, especially in the West. Uh, we are all sort of like a goal oriented and then sort of like uh, if I do meditation, maybe I'll get healthy. And then maybe if I meditation, I'll get be so peaceful, I'll be more have a capability. So it'll help my promotion. And it's so it's sort of like really people think meditation as another sort of something I have to achieve. 
So I'm really grateful for you pointing out meditation is being peaceful and calm and then just calm down our mind and then sort of taking a little break from all this business of mind. So I really kind of grateful for the questioner today pointing out these things and then we really kind of watch out for our kind of a tendency to regard meditation as another sort of things I have to attain. So thank you very much. Oh, 만약에 가게를 운영한다 할때 명상을 하면 가게가 잘 된다. 이렇게 관점을 가지시면 안 됩니다. Say you're running a business or store and you're telling yourself that if I meditate, that I'll be a better businessman and my store is going to thrive. That's not the right attitude. 어, 명상은 내 삶을 이렇게 괴로움 없이 긴장 없이 편안하게 살기 위해서 하는 겁니다. Meditation is what you engage in order to live a life that's uh, devoid of suffering in a peaceful and relaxed way. 모든 것을 다 놓아 버리고 명상하는 과정도 편안하고 명상이 끝나도 편안하게 이렇게 해야 됩니다. So you have to let go of everything so that the process of meditation and the after effects of meditation is peaceful and relaxing. 근데 이렇게 하면 결과적으로 장사가 잘될 수는 있습니다. As a consequence, unintended consequence of meditation, your store might thrive. 왜냐하면 손님을 맞는 자세가 내가 편안하기 때문에 친절하게 하고 손님이 사가지 않아도 이렇게 편안하게 안내할 수가 있고 이것저것 만져도 편안하게 볼 수가 있고 이러면 사람들이 볼때이 가게 오면 편안하기 때문에 조금씩 조금씩 더올 수가 있다. And your store might thrive because from a customer service perspective, you know the way you deal with your customer, you might be more relaxed, more peaceful. Uh, more positive and kind. So that might compel more people to visit your store. 어, 그래서 어, 아, 그럼 명상하면 가게가 제 집에 잘 되더라. 나도 해 봐야지. 이거는 욕심으로 하기 때문에 역효과가 납니다. However, if somebody sees that and say, you know what? Meditation really helped drive that store. So I'm going to try meditation. Well, that's not going to work because you know, you're now approaching it from a position of greed and desire. 그래서 부처님께서 수행자들에게 어떤 신통력도 신비한 현상도 사용하거나 말하지 말라고 하신 겁니다. That's why Buddha kind of forbid his followers while he was alive from engaging in any kind of special abilities or trying to kind of gain any kind of extra sensory powers through meditation or practice. 대중은 그것을 보고 자기 욕심으로 욕심을 내려놓는 게 아니라 욕심을 채우는 수단으로 접근하기 때문에 즉 대중을 현혹시킨다 어리석게 만든다 그런 위험이 있다는 거. So what Buddha said was that if the public sees you performing some type of uh, you know super human powers or some kind of achievement or ESP or miracles then the public will look at spiritual practice as a way to gain those powers. And you're trying to, you're actually increasing their ignorance, not enlightening them. 한국의 옛날, 한국 옛날 얘기 중에 이런 얘기가 있습니다. There's an old story in Korea. 아, 가난한 흥부와 부자 놀부가 있었습니다. So there was a brother, one was poor and one was rich. 음, 근데 흥부는 가난하지만 착했고, 놀부는 부자지만은, 어, 좀, so one brother was poor, but he was a nice brother, and one brother was really rich, but he was not. He was not so nice. 그래서 놀부는 자기 동생인 흥부를 늘 멸시했습니다. That's why the rich brother always looked down upon the poor brother. 그런데 어느 날 어, 다리 부러진 제비를 어, 흥부가 저기 발견했습니다. Then the poor brother one day found a swallow who had fallen because it had broken his ankle. 그래서 불쌍하게 생각하고 잘 치료해서 살려줬습니다. So the poor brother took care of the swallow, reset its legs, and sent it on its way. 음, 그랬더니 이듬해 아, 
박씨 하나를 몰고 왔습니다. Then the swallow came back the next season and dropped off a seed. 그것을 심었더니 박이 주렁주렁 열렸습니다. And it was a seed with pumpkins, so they had a lot of pumpkins. 아, 그것을 나중에 켰더니 쪼갰더니 아주 보물이 나왔습니다. So once the pumpkin school became ripe, uh, the poor brother opened it up uh, and saw there was a lot of gems and treasures within. 그래서 형부가 부자가 됐습니다. So the poor brother instead now became rich. 그러니까 형부가 부자 된 것을 보고 이유, 어떻게 해서 부자 됐나 궁금해서 물었습니다. So the rich brother, becoming curious how his poor brother all of a sudden became rich, asked him. 이제 부러진 다리 부러진 제비를 고쳐주고 이런 일이 생겼다고 사실대로 말했습니다. So the poor brother was honest about this. Say, I fixed the leg of a swallow who had broken its legs and took care of it, and this is what happened. 놀부는 다리 부러진 제비를 찾으러 다녔습니다. So the rich brother was going off and looking for a swallow, you know, who had broken its legs. 그런 제비를 찾을 수가 없었습니다. But it was very difficult to find one. 그래서 제비를 잡아가 다리를 부러뜨렸습니다. So he actually found a healthy swallow and broke its legs. 음, 그리고 치료해 줬습니다. And then he fixed him again. 근데 역시 박씨를 물어왔어요. Then that swallow came back the next season and dropped off a seed, a pumpkin seed. 어, 심었더니 박이 많이 열렸습니다. And he planted that seed and you know this huge uh, pumpkin. Uh, the 거기에서 온갖 어, 마귀들이 나타나서 흥부를 잡아갔다, 놀부를 잡아갔다 이런 얘기. So he opened up the pumpkin at the end when it became ripe, and instead of treasures and gems, a lot of evil spirits came out and took the rich brother away. 우리가 행위를 똑같이 한다고 똑같은 결과가 나오는 게 아닙니다. Just because we engage in the same behavior. Or action doesn't lead to the same result. 어떤 마음으로 했느냐는 거죠. It's how you, what attitude, what approach, how you, what attitude you approach that with. That's important. 마음을 비우고 모든 욕심을 비우고 편안하게 정진을 해야 니르바나에 가까워집니다. So you have to engage in spiritual practice. With your mind empty in a relaxed, peaceful way, that's how you approach nirvana. 그 과정에서 부수입으로 이런저런 세상에서 볼때 좋아 보이는 일이 일어날 수도 있습니다. As a, as a part of this journey, some of the unintended consequences may be benefits that looks good to the outside in this world. 그러니까 그 부수입을 보고, 어, 저거 어떻게 해서 일어났지? 마치 널부가 흥부 그 부자 된거 보고 하듯이 그렇게 해서 그것을 흉내 내는 것으로 수행이라고 생각하면 이것은 잘못된 것입니다. But if people look at those unintended consequences that look good to them and then mimic the spiritual practice in order to obtain those unintended consequences, then that's not the right attitude to bring to spiritual practice. 그래서 여러분들은 조급한 마음으로 어떤 게 수행이 더 좋냐, 어떤 게 효과가 더 있느냐. 어? 미얀마께 더 나았냐, 티베트께 더 나았냐 이런 식으로 널 여기저기 지금 어디 가면 돈더 많이 버느냐와 똑같은 관점에서 지금 헤매고 다니는 거예요. So that's why a lot of people in the public, you know, try to compare and shop among the different a way of spiritual practice and try to compare and contrast between Tibetan versus Zen, for example. They're looking to buy different merchandises. 어떤 방법이 중요한냐가 아니라 바로 그 헐떡거리는 마음, 욕심을 내려놓을 때 해탈의 길, 열반의 길이 시작된다. So it's not the really the how, the methodology by which you get there that's important. It's the what's important is how do you approach it, you know, the mind uh, as you approach it, you know, the emptying of the mind that's important. 네, 님. Yes, hello, Venerable. Um, I am the, the same as well. I'm new to your teachings um, and find your uh, YouTube clips very beneficial um, for daily 
daily advice and the advice that you have given me today, it's like you've understood me incredibly well, only just meeting me. Uh, and I thank you and I will take on board everything that you have suggested today um, and I, I'm, I'm grateful to have met you and this, to have this opportunity. Thank you. 제가 병원에 가라는 말을 해서 죄송합니다. 이런 말을 할때 혹시 본인이 상처 입을까 사실은 약간 염려가 되는데도 이렇게 잘 받아줘서 감사합니다. So I'm always hesitant uh, in suggesting and recommending somebody go see a medical doctor or psychologist because you know I'm not sure whether the recipient of that recommendation might feel hurt. So thank you very much for being generous and kind in being receptive to what I just told you. 우리가 다리가 부러졌을 때 병원에 가는 거나 어뭐 약간 이, 이 감정 조절이 지나치게 안 돼서 병원에 가는 거나 같은 거지 그것을 다르게 보시면 안 됩니다. Right, so people, you know, tend to be more receptive, uh, receptive to suggestion to go to see a doctor if you have a broken bone, for example. But not if you have, you know, issues with your emotions or psychology. But they should be the same. 음 그러나 서양의학은 정신이 병에 대해서 정신 질환에 대해서 연구된 지가 이제 백 년이 조금 넘는 아주 짧은 역사를 가지고 있습니다. So in the West, uh, you know, basically understanding of the psychology and the, you know. Sickness of the mind or the various diseases that attack the mind. The understanding really started happening only about 100 years ago. 음 그렇기 때문에 아직 그 치료 수준이 매우 낮다라고 말할 수 있습니다. So we're still at immature stages. 아 그럼에도 불구하고 제가 권유를 하는 것은 응급 치료에는 굉장히 효과적이다라고 봅니다. Despite that, I think the medicine can really provide very effective uh, short-term assistance. 음, 그렇기 때문에 조금 이렇게 에, 스스로 컨트롤이 잘안될 때는 응급 치료를 받고 그 다음에 스스로 자기를 치료하는 게 수행인데 이 자가 치료를 겸한다면 저는 아주 좋은 효과를 나타낸다고 생각합니다. The spiritual practice is a matter of self-healing, but in the beginning. Sometimes helping from medication of other uh, interventions can help you on that path a lot easier. So and really amplify the effectiveness of your self practice. 네, 지금 얼굴에 이렇게 항상 열기가 이렇게 상기 이렇게 항상 열이 오르고 이렇게 예, 심리가 불안하기 때문에 조금 음, 안정제를 먹고 이게 신경의 예민함을 좀 이렇게 진정시켜야 합니다. So if you have a lot of heat usually in your head and your face and if you feel excited all the time then you know you do want to ask for help in trying to get down to more normal levels as you engage in self healing practices. 음, 그러면서 절도 하고 명상도 하면 훨씬 도움이 됩니다. And you know doing bombing practice and meditation at that stage then can really help you. 네. 자, 다음 주에 또 뵙겠습니다. And I'll see you again next week.